touch. You got the power. Howdy everyone and welcome to the Serial Geek TV YouTube channel. My name is James Etock and today we're going to take a look at a cameo in the very first episode of The Transformers. Specifically a cameo that only those in the animation industry, specifically storyboard artists, would have appreciated. So, let's go. So, back in the late 90s I became good friends with Filmation storyboard artist and writer Robert Lamb, thanks largely in part to the existence of the He-Man and She-Ra episode review website, which I operated with Zadok Angel. Remember when websites were a thing? Prompted by our glowing review of two of his episodes, Robert contacted us and began sharing lots of behind the scenes information about He-Man and She-Ra and Filmation in general. It was all very fascinating. In those early informative years, Robert was kind enough to explain in great detail just how much he enjoyed his experience working at Filmation, especially in the storyboard department, in which many of the Filmation staff sported moustaches. I mean, it was the 80s. Look at this photo of my father's five-a-side football team. Moustaches are plenty. Anyway, I remember seeing a photo of storyboard artist Vic Dalchell, whose name I had seen pop up during the end credits on many a cartoon of the 80s, such as He-Man, She-Ra, The Transformers, The Real Ghostbusters, Cops, and many, many more. I always found it nice to put a face to a name, especially as it was incredibly hard to do so back in those early days of the internet. Vic Dalchell had been one of Robert's closest friends at Filmation, and the best man at his wedding. Needless to say, Robert had a lot of nice things to say about Vic. So, what has this backstory got to do with the robots in disguise? I'm getting to that. I've always been a huge fan of the first season of The Transformers and, as a child, I watched the show debut in the UK in daily five minute chunks on an early morning children's TV show fronted by Roland Ratt. I recorded each and every segment of The Transformers and watched them over and over again until I knew all the dialogue. Now one scene I always enjoyed for its heightened drama featured two men discovering the remains of a power plant which, unbeknownst to them, had been exhumed for raw materials and left in ruins by those dastardly Decepticons. Ever since being shown a photo of Vic Dalchell, I would always be reminded of him during this scene as one of the men, Joe, bears a striking resemblance to him. In 2013, having gotten to meet Vic, he confirmed that he was indeed used as the character model for Joe. He explained that when he storyboarded the scene, he simply illustrated two generic workmen. However, character designer and storyboard artist Floro Derry decided to base the incidental character designs on his fellow storyboard artists. In fact, the other workman is based on David Russell, another storyboard artist that worked on Transformers. Not only is Vic Dalchell's character voiced by Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime, but he is also one of the first two men in the animated series to meet a Transformer. That's a pretty good thing to put on your curriculum vitae, if you ask me. I should mention that over the last two decades, I've spoken to many people in the animation industry, and it would appear that during the 70s and the 80s, the storyboard artists were having the most fun, often including Easter eggs and sight gags that none of the scripts called for. I mean, there was that time that storyboard artist Tom Sito put Smurfs into a He-Man storyboard, or the time when Michael Swanigan reused a character design from the animated movie Rock and Roll in a storyboard for She-Ra. Have no fear, in time I shall feature many, many more of these fun factoids on this channel. So I'm not quite done yet, I thought I'd add a little bit to this video. Earlier I talked about how when the first few episodes of the Transformers, the More Than Meets the Eye miniseries, aired on the Roland Rat show, they were shown in little five minute chunks, and I still remember where most of the segments began and ended. So how about we go on this journey together and we'll cover the first part of More Than Meets the Eye, just so you can see how these segments originally aired in the UK. Okay, so the first segment ended with Soundwave taking to the skies. I distinctly remember this for two reasons. One, that awesome dramatic music that ends the scene. And two, the start of the next scene with the first appearance of Megatron. And when you think about it, it's not a very dramatic first appearance. The next segment ended with Skywarp bringing Megatron back to life four million years after the Ark had crash landed on Earth. I always remember this one more than most because I recall Skywarp's line, even the delivery, Megatron, my leader, we are alive again. The other thing to note, even as a kid, you could tell that these were not the moments the episode, as it were, was supposed to take a break. 
The next one, I'll be honest, is a little hazy, but I believe it was the shot of the space cruiser being built after Megatron's speech, because I remember it breaking up the pace of music, which was reaching a crescendo shortly before Cliffjumper unveils the world's largest hidden cannon. Look at that thing. The next segment's ending, I remember, because it's after we witnessed the frankly epic shots of the Autobots transforming, really showcasing some of Toei Doga's fantastic animation. Seriously, look at these transformations. I could watch them all day. The intricacies and little touches to each sequence is beautiful. Anyway, yeah, this segment ended with the awesome scene of the Autobots racing past the camera as they head off to fight the Decepticons. The final segment ended, naturally, with the end of the first part of the More Than Meets the Eye miniseries, with Optimus Prime unable to free Spike and Sparkplug. It's been nearly 40 years, so I can't quite recall if they showed the preview of the next episode. I know for a fact they did when they came to show the Ultimate Doom three-part story, because I'll never forget that I truly believe Bumblebee was falling into that volcano because of the utter genius of the editing of that preview. The first time we in the UK got to see these episodes continuously without being edited into five minute chunks was when the VHS Arrival from Cybertron was released, which was the More Than Meets the Eye miniseries combined into one single episode. So thank you for watching this video, please be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe.